Born in Gravenhurst, Ontario in 1890, Norman Bethune became a doctor in 1916. Early in his professional career, he developed tuberculosis. This experience influenced his subsequent career in thoracic surgery and his design of thoracic surgical instruments. He was an idealist. He was a dreamer. But he was a, perfe he was a perfectionist. What, uh, if, like in Montreal, when he specialized in uh, 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 diseases of the lung, he was incensed, he was enraged at the inequality of the uh, medical care for the rich and for the poor. He said there were two kinds of tuberculosis. The rich man got better and the poor man died. He was a visionary with a world view espousing the cause of the Republican side in the Spanish Civil War and the Revolutionary side in the Chinese Civil War. In Canada, he was an early advocate for a universal health care system. And that's why he was um, kind of, um, some people call him a crackpot. <laughs> Maybe he was, but he was 40 years ahead of his time. All he wanted was socialized medicine. He wanted a prepaid medical care for every Canadian citizen. In the Spanish Civil War, Dr. Bethune was the first to introduce the mobile blood bank to the battlefield. Using blood and plasma in refrigerated containers, his mobile units reduced death by shock and made operations possible in the midst of fighting. I mean, the, the bombs that were falling on Spain, uh, the, Bethune said, Spain is a scar on my heart. And Albert Camus said the same thing. And anyone who followed the Spanish Civil War, you guys are too young. It was horrendous. I mean, the Germans and the Italians were practicing their bombing and their war machine on the Spanish people. And the West just turned its eyes away. This is what led him to other corners of the world, I think, because he wanted to take that care and attention and knowledge to Spain and to China. I do remember when he came back from Spain, I remember him saying to my father, China is where I have to go. And I remember that as though it was almost a, a statement of fact that this is where the world should be looking. And so I must go. In 1938, he went to China, where his indomitable courage and medical skill won him immortality in the minds of the Chinese people. And when he went to China, he traveled with the 8th Root Army. He operated in temples or caves or somebody's home or on the battlefield, usually just a mile or two ahead of the uh, Japanese army. In 1939, while operating in the mountains without anesthetic, rubber gloves, or antiseptics, Dr. Bethune cut his finger and died of blood poisoning. China still reveres him as a saint. And the esteem, even after 60 years, he's almost worshipped there. Children model their lives after Dr. Bethune because of his humanitarianism. I think he knew before he died how deeply the Chinese people loved him and that he was in their hearts, but he didn't know that it, he was in the hearts of millions of people. I was speaking to somebody just um, a few weeks ago who works in China, has a business in China, and I said, what does the name Dr. Norman Bethune mean now in China? The same as it did when you were over there, he said. It is a magic, magic name.